Welcome to the Access Online Claim Submission Training video. This video will demonstrate how to submit a CMS 1500 professional claim using the Access Online Provider Portal. Access recommends submitting claims using the portal for fast and convenient services. On the azaccess.gov website, click on the Plans and Providers tab. From the drop-down menu on the left side is a link that reads Access Online. This link will take you to the Access Online Provider Portal website. If this is your first time using the Access Online Provider Portal, you must set up a new account. To do this, click on the registration link under the new account section. You must accept the user agreement by selecting I agree at the bottom of the page. Follow the steps to set up your account. Please remember that sharing accounts is not allowed and be sure to keep your login information safe. With your new account set up, you are now ready to submit claims online. In this demonstration, we will be submitting a mock claim for a non-emergency medical transportation. Please be advised that this is only a demonstration. The data that is displayed should not be used when submitting live claims. Let's get started. Enter your username and password, then click sign in. Once logged in, the main page will display. On the left, you will see the menu column. The center of the main page has additional information about each section in the menu. In the menu, click Claim Submission. Now you'll click on the down arrow button in the drop down menu located in the center of the page. You will now see three claim options, professional, institutional, and dental. These are equivalent to submitting paper claims. For this demonstration, we will be submitting a professional claim for a non-emergency medical transportation provider. Throughout the claim screens, at the bottom, you will see a Save and Submit button. You will not be using these buttons when submitting your claim. Please do not click on these buttons until instructed to do so in this training video. The submitter verification of the professional claim submission will now display. Verify the correct provider information. Some providers may have more than one ID. If the information displayed is incorrect, please contact the Access Provider Enrollment Unit at 602-417-7670, option number five. Currently, you are in the Submitter tab. Next to the Submitter tab, you will see seven more tabs. Providers, Patients and Subscribers, Ambulance, Other Payer, Attachment, claims information, and service lines. If the correct provider information is displayed, you will select the Providers tab next. You'll now notice four additional tabs will display, Billing Provider, Rendering Provider, Referring Provider, and Service Facility. The tab will automatically display the Billing Provider screen. A red asterisk marks indicates required fields. In the Tax ID field, enter the Billing Provider's Tax ID. If a group is billing, enter the Group Biller Tax ID number. Click the circle next to EIN. Providers with valid NPIs will leave the Provider Commercial Number field blank. Providers that are mandated to maintain an MPI will enter the 10-digit MPI in the CMMS National Provider ID field and click Fine. Providers who do not have a valid MPI will use their Access Provider ID. This will be entered in the Provider Commercial Number field. Next, you will click your Entity Type Qualifier. This will be person or non-person. When you're done entering all the required field information, click the Find button. For this mock claim, our non-emergency medical transportation provider will enter the six-digit access provider ID in the provider commercial number field. This mock billing provider will be a non-person entity. We will now click Find. The provider information should now populate on the page. If the information displayed is incorrect, please contact the Access Provider Enrollment Unit. Next, you will move on to the Pay2 Locator Code. 
the locator code determines the address to which payment is sent to. The remittance advice will be mailed to the provider pay to address for those providers not set up for electronic remittance advices. Along the top, you will now click on rendering provider. Do not click on the save or submit buttons. When you click on the rendering provider tab, the rendering provider screen will now display. The rendering provider's 10 digit NPI is required. Click your entity type qualifier. When done entering the required information, click the find button. Access providers without a valid MPI will use their access provider ID. This will be entered in the provider commercial number field. For this mock claim, our non-emergency transportation provider will enter the six digit access provider ID. This mock rendering provider will be a non-person entity. We will now click find. The rendering provider's name will appear. Returning to the top tabs, click on patient and subscribers. The heading on the screen will read insured or subscriber under the tab option. You will now enter the member's access ID and their birth date. Providers can also check the member's eligibility using the access online provider portal. Click on the payer responsibility dropdown. From this dropdown, providers must determine the access payment after Medicare and all other first and third party payers. For this mock claim, we will identify access as a primary payer. We will highlight P for primary. Providers may be asked to submit additional documentation for fee for service professional claims. Documentation may include, but is not limited to, explanation of benefits, medical reports, and daily trip reports for NEMTs. Click on the Attachments tab. Using the Attachments tab will hold claims for 15 days to allow time for documentation to be uploaded using the Transaction Insight Portal. We highly recommend providers also view the Transaction Insight Portal training video, as both portals go hand in hand. If you will not be uploading attachments for the claim, you may skip the Attachments tab and click the Claim Information tab. For this mock claim, we will be uploading an attachment. The first section you will see is the report type. This is required only if attachment information is being submitted. Click on the drop down arrow key. This will list forms that may be requested by Access. If you do not see a report type, example, daily trip report, scroll and select B4 referral form. The next section is the report transmission field. Click on the drop down arrow key and select EL electronic only. This will be used when documentation is being uploaded using the Transaction Insight Portal. You will now move on to the control number. This section will be the last section of the claims attachment tabs. The control number is also referred to as the PWK number. A PWK number is a unique number that you will create for each claim and document that you submit. This allows the system to link the attachment to the correct claim. Access recommends providers use the member's access ID number beginning with the uppercase A followed by the data service. Be sure there are no spaces, special characters, and that you are using a capital A. If there is even a space of a difference, the Transaction Insight Portal will not attach the documentation to the correct claim. Click on the Claim Information tab located at the top of the screen. The first required field is the Patient Control Number field. The patient control number is not the same thing as the PWK number. The patient control number is a number that the provider uses internally. For example, this could be the patient account number. For the purpose of this training, we will be using the access ID number for our member. Click yes for all the following fields. Provider accepts assignment, benefit assignment, and release of information consent. Return to the tabs at the top and click the service line tabs. On this screen, you will be entering your service lines. On the left side of the screen, you will see the ICD-10 indication field. Click ICD-10. You can enter more than one diagnosis code field located on the right of the screen. For each diagnosis code entered, make sure you select the corresponding diagnosis code pointer. In the service date field, enter the beginning and ending date of service. 
Now enter the total charges for the procedures in the line charges field. The next field is the quantity field. You will see two options, minutes and units. The unit definition must be consistent with the HCPCS and CPT codes. For the smog claim, the non-emergency transportation provider will bill the numbers of miles as units of the service. In the HCPCS code field, enter the procedure code. On the right of the screen, you will see the place of service. From the drop-down menu, select your place of service. For this mock claim, we will be using place of service 99. When you have completed all the information for your service lines, click the add button. The screen will now clear. This will allow you to enter new service lines. If you are adding multiple service lines, be sure to click the corresponding diagnosis code pointer before you enter the date of service for the new service lines you are adding. At the bottom of your screen, you will see the service lines you have added. If needed, you may edit the lines by clicking the pencil or the red square to remove the line completely. Once you've entered all of your claim information, you will now click submit at the bottom of the screen. The claim confirmation screen will now display. You should see on the left side a successful message. You are now ready to use the Transaction Insight Portal if you have indicated that you will be submitting medical documentation.